The DNC is in a bind. That's my understatement for the day. They're overstocked with presidential hopefuls, not one of whom is remotely qualified to be president. Tulsi Gabbard being the possible exception, and they're giving her the cold shoulder. In 2016, they made the mistake of letting Bernie Sanders trudge around the country extolling the virtues of socialism. Now the whole damned party is doing it. He was supposedly a sideshow then, a human scratching post for Hillary Clinton to dig her claws into to tone up her muscles, and a sop for the free everything for everyone crowd. Everybody knew he wasn't going to be the nominee, but remember how he surprised the DNC by making Clinton fight for her votes? I doubt Mr. Obama was best pleased at having to step in and tell him to pack it in and get behind her, but the press came through. This time, it's not so much Crazy Bernie, but Looney Liz. Her platform is virtually indistinguishable from his. In the latest Quinnipiac poll, she's up on Joe Biden by seven points, although he aced her by a point in the Economist YouGov poll. If you want to have a sobering internet experience, Google her website. Read it all if your nerves can stand it. She lays out more victim group giveaways, general purpose nanny state programs, and soak the rich schemes than Bernie could shake a stick at, all paid for by you, the middle class taxpayer. Not only has she outclassed Bernie as a socialist, but outclassed AOC and the Squadettes. It wouldn't surprise me if Vladimir Putin flew to Boston and pinned the order of Lenin on her chest personally. To add to the fun, Hillary Clinton has emerged from her padded cell and is working her special magic again, gossiping with the mainstream media's adoring talking heads and slandering fellow female Democrats. The DMC has ample reason, even without that, to be pissed off at her. She was a singularly unattractive candidate in 2016, almost any way you want to look at it. Shrill, haughty, convinced of her own towering greatness, none too energetic a campaigner, and persuaded that the presidency was hers by divine right. And they couldn't have rolled out a more corrupt candidate if they'd nominated Silvio Berlusconi. But honorable folks at the DNC muckety-mucks are, they felt bound to keep their word and make her the president after deselecting her in 2008 in favor of Barack Obama. And she repaid this large and accommodating gesture by losing to push over Donald Trump. Lucky for her, the DNC isn't the mafia, or she'd have been fitted out with a pair of high-fashion cement boots. Three years on, the Dems still have every reason to despise her for the screw-up, and the party's subsequent humiliation on a more or less daily basis by the detestable Mr. Trump. They must wish she'd pipe down and fade away. But not so fast. It's fair to ask at this point, which is the driving force behind the leftist agenda? The hapless Democratic Party leadership, or the mainstream media? Or are they working in tandem, with the politicians doing the play-acting, and the media functioning as the production crew. It's hard to tell what with directors, producers, scriptwriters, and cast all working so harmoniously together. From a purely practical point of view, however, it's the director who has the final say in regard to production values, and it's clear that neither Tom Perez nor Nancy Pelosi is directing anything. Let's assume, therefore, that 2020 is the mainstream media's baby and not the DNC's. That brings capitalism to the fore once again in terms of ratings and ad revenues. Both the networks and the DNC know in their heart of hearts that they're marketing a tragic comedy, not a serious drama. Looney Liz is unelectable for the same reason Bernie Sanders was unelectable. She's an angry, domineering ideologue and we're just not ready for her to throw us into the socialist shark tank. For his part, Mr. Biden is barely hanging on physically and mentally, without factoring in the likely effect of his capers in Ukraine and China in behalf of his doofus son, Hunter. The Democratic Party has no chance of winning the election, short of Donald Trump's demise or incapacity, unless maybe the Red Chinese take down the nation's power grid on Election Day, or the North Koreans invade Hawaii, or Russia annexes Venezuela and Mexico, or the economy spontaneously collapses. 
The Dems can hope, but even those great leaps forward probably wouldn't do the trick. So the question is, if not Liz or Joe, who? Who should be cast as the best candidate to lose to the Trumpster in 2020? Somebody has to play the part, if for no other reason than to keep the Dems in the game. With Liz, they run the risk of frightening off their big donors for decades. Joe Biden is, well, Joe Biden. On the other hand, they can't justify wasting a younger, more valuable party asset like Kamala, Beto, or Mayor Pete. That'll only make it harder to deliver the planned hammer blow in 2024. Besides, Grumpy Liz, Doddering Joe, and the Greenhorns won't sell newspapers or boost TV advertising revenues like, are you ready for this, Hillary Clinton. Yes, I'm serious. She's got juice. Running her would be the left-wing media equivalent of the 1974 rematch be between Muhammad Ali and Joe Fraser, a real moneymaker. She may be dowdy and corrupt, but she has fundraising capability and name recognition that won't quit. She's hip as an entertainer, too. Hard to beat for snarkiness. The months of campaign hype and the post-election rehash would be a goldmine for the networks. Moreover, she'd be easily expendable after doing her bit for the box office. With her back in the picture, the Democratic sitcom in 2020 could be even zanier and more entertaining than it already is in 2019. It's almost too tempting. So, you see, there's a reason, apart from personal vanity and clinical delusion, why Hillary is making the rounds again. She's sticking out her thumb to hitch a media ride, and they're slowing down to pick her up. She's done with explaining to us why the 2016 election left her by the side of the road. Enough of that. Now, she declares, she actually won. She beat Trump in 2016, and she can do it again, damn it. That's what I mean about juice. She may lack Muhammad Ali's gift for pre-fight repartee, but she's ready, willing, and able to do 15 rounds with the Trumpster. All the media has to do is give her a lift to the ring. Okay, now you can go laugh your heads off, and thanks for watching. But don't be surprised if she proves me right. The best laughs may be yet to come. Please click like and subscribe to support the channel, and let me hear from you in the comment section below with your thoughts and ideas. We'll see you back here next time.